In this video, I'm going to be walking through setting up Active Directory authentication for a Cisco router. This will be using AAA uh, and RADIUS through the Network Policy Server role in Windows Server 2012 R2. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, install the role. So we're going to fire up Server Manager, we're going to go to Add Roles and Features, uh, click Next, Next again, Next again, and we're going to find the network policy and access services. I like that. Yes, we want to add the features. Next again. Next again. Next again. And yes, it's the network policy server that we would like. Next again. And install. And I'm going to pause the video while that's installing. So just a bit of brief uh, background regarding our network topology that we're working with here. So we're actually using GNS3 as the platform uh, for this. And so essentially we have our domain controller here, we have our NPS server here, and we have our router here. Uh, so essentially the AAA services will be configured here, uh, and it, it will use the NPS server uh, for radius authentication, which will then in turn query the domain controller. So while the MPS role is installing over on MPS1, I'm just going to hop over to our domain controller here. Um, we're just going to create a quick group, uh, which is essentially going to have all of the users that are going to be able to authenticate to our router. So we're going to fire up Server Manager and going to go into Users and Computers. And under our Staff OU here, we're just going to create a quick group and going to call it network admins click OK and we're just going to go back into that group just give it a quick description so admin level access 15 and go to the members here we go Perfect. Let's go and have a look how the uh, MPS role is getting on. Okay, so back on our MPS1 server here, and the role has completed. So I'm just going to close the, the end of the wizard there. And here we can see the network access policy server is online. I'm going to right click on that and go to network policy server. And here we have our network policy server console. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is register this server within Active Directory. So we're going to right click on the MPS uh, local there and register server in Active Directory and click OK. Click OK again. So that server is now registered within Active Directory. So the next task we're going to want to perform is to essentially add our start adding our radius clients in. And it's that specific router that we want to add in. So we're going to click on radius clients, right click and then click new. And we want to enable this radius client and we're going to give it a friendly name of core A, which is our router name. We're going to specify its IP address. Excellent. Now I'm going to specify a shared secret, just going to keep this very simple for the lab, just Cisco. And on the advanced tab there, we're going to drop down the vendor name and select Cisco. And click OK. And so that's our radius client added there. Next we're going to have a look at the policies. So we're going to expand the policies out and the first one we're going to have a look at is the connection request policies. So that's essentially saying who can actually make a request to this radius server. Okay, so let's select new. I'm going to call this core A. I'm going to select next. And we're going to specify a condition. And here we're going to specify a client-friendly name. 
and as, as the description says there, so the client friendly name condition specifies the name of the radius client that forwarded the connection request to NPS. So we're going to click add and in here we're going to type core A as that is the friendly name of our router that's making the request to the NPS server. So select OK, select next and yes we want to forward forwarding connection requests, authentication requests onto this server, that's fine. Click next, next again, next again and click finish. Next we're going to have a look at the network policies, so we're going to select network policies, we're going to right click, select new and for this policy name we're going to call it Cisco Admin Level 15. So the idea here being that we can essentially pass through the privilege level 15 through to the router uh, and later on in this policy we're, we're essentially going to tie our Active Directory group that we created earlier through to this policy so anybody that's within that group um, that matches this specific policy uh, privilege level 15 will get passed through to the router so you can almost imagine there we can almost have uh, another policy uh, with, with a, a different privilege level associated to it uh, tied to another group in Active Directory okay so moving on then uh, select next and we're going to specify a condition here and this is where we're going to add our group in Active Directory select users groups click add add groups and we're going to select our network admins uh, select OK and next access granted and uh, we're going to leave that defaults and select next and next again and here we for the radius attributes for standard we're going to remove the framed protocol and for the service type we're going to edit that and select login okay that and then under the vendor specific we're going to add a new attribute and we're going to drop that down select Cisco and we're going to add add a new value and this is where we're passing through essentially privilege level 15 so we're going to essentially say shell colon priv dash l v l equals 15 click OK OK that close that select next and here we can verify our settings and then click finish Now that our radius configuration is complete on our network policy server, we're going to move over into GNS3 and have a look at our Cisco IOS configuration. So we're going to pull up GNS3 and we're going to pull up our terminal window for our router. So we're going to log in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is create a username and password uh, under the local uh, database for this router so essentially the idea being here is once we've configured our radius configuration and we've specified our radius servers if for whatever reason we can't communicate with our radius server we'll add in a local fallback to use the local database essentially which is why we're going to create our, our user okay so I'm going to move into global configuration mode and we're going to specify a username admin privilege level 15 and secret Cisco 12345 and we're just using a real simple uh, config with a username and password there just for our lab so the next thing we're going to do is enable uh, AAA so we're going to do AAA new model and we're going to specify uh, that we're going to be using a radius group so that's AAA group server radius and we're going to call it rad underscore servers okay and now we're going to specify the server so server private 192 
and we're going to specify the auth port which is 1812 and the accounting port which is 1813 and our key which we specified earlier in the video is Cisco again just for simplicity in our lab okay so we're going to exit that uh, so the next thing we're going to want to do is essentially enable uh, our AAA for authentication and authorization and we're going to specify to use that radius group rad servers and then as we said earlier uh, fall back uh, to the local database for that login if the radius servers can't be uh, contacted okay so for that we're going to do AAA authentication login default group rad servers and then that all important local and the same for authorization so we're going to do AAA authorization exec default group rad underscore servers and again that all important local and if authenticated okay and the last uh, command we're going to drop in there is triple a authorization console okay so the last thing we're going to want to do here essentially and just for uh, our own sanity really is to, and, and for, for troubleshooting purposes is essentially enable some debug options so we're going to come out of global configuration mode and we're going to switch on debug for uh, AAA authentication so debug AAA authentication and also uh, debug AAA authorization and the last one there debug radius okay all that's left to do is test our login so let's test our login okay perfect and we've uh, successfully authenticated there so probably just worth pointing out a couple of things really uh, that we can see from those debug options that we enabled so the first thing is uh, just to verify that our radius server is actually correct so we've got 192.168.0.2 so we can just uh, validate that great that's all correct the next thing is our username there excellent that's correct and the other thing to verify is the uh, privilege level 15 that's been passed through and we can see there so there's the shell colon priv dash LVL equals 15 so if we had multiple policies set up in our MPS server we can and we're specifying different privilege levels we can actually just check there to make sure that those privilege levels are being passed through correctly thanks for watching